Hi, uh, thank you for joining this presentation. My name is Varun Narani, and this is a joint work with uh, Shweta Agrawal, Yuval Shai, Iyal Kushilevich, Manoj Prabhagaran, Vinod Prabhagaran, and Alan Rosen. In this uh, presentation, we address the possibility of using one directional communication over a noisy channel to securely compute two party functionalities. First, uh, let me quickly describe what a channel is. It is a mathematical model of a noisy memoryless communication link. It has a finite set of input and output symbols, and it is fully described by the distribution over the output symbols induced by each input symbol. A single use of the channel can be described as follows. When the input is X, the channel outputs symbol Y with probability P Y given X. Guaranteeing security while communicating over a noisy channel, as well as exploiting channel noise to facilitate security. Both have been studied extensively, both in uh, core information theory and cryptography. A notable example is the wiretap channel introduced by Weiner in 75. In this model, there is a noisy link from the sender to the receiver. And additionally, there is an eavesdropper who is tapping onto this channel over a, another uh, noisy link. This is modeled by a single input multiple output channel. And we are interested in the rate at which the sender can message the receiver while ensuring privacy from the eavesdropper. Another well-studied problem is of using noisy channels to facilitate secure two-party computation. It is well known that uh, only a limited class of functionalities can be computed by two parties who are interacting over a clear channel. This was shown by Kushlevitz in 92. But when the parties have access to a non-trivial channel, they can indeed compute every functionality with statistical security. And this works in both the semi-honest and the malicious setting. Hereby, a non-trivial channel, we mean a channel that is neither a clear channel or a completely noisy channel where the output is independent of the input. In this talk, we are interested in a more constrained version of this problem where there is no interaction. That is, the communication is only one directional over the provided noisy channel. The model of one-way secure computation, or OWSC for short, was introduced by Gerg et al. in 2015. The objective of OWSC is to securely compute center uh, receiver functionalities using one-way communication over a given noisy channel. Due to this one directionality, we can only expect to compute sender receiver functionalities that take input from the sender and provide an output to the receiver. Hence, such a functionality can itself be thought of as a channel and OWSC as a way of securely implementing a given channel using the channel at hand. The protocol for one-way secure computation has a simple structure. The sender encodes the input, say, A, using <laughs> an encoder S and sends it to the receiver, possibly making multiple uses of the channel. And the receiver decodes the output of the channel using a decoder R to compute a potential output. Correctness requires that the receiver's output distribution is close to the distribution F of A. Security against the receiver requires that the receiver learns only F of A. This specifically means that the sender cannot simply send her input A to the receiver using a error correcting code. And the security against the sender requires that the sender only learns that the receiver's output is distributed according to F of A. Hence, specifically, the sender cannot simply sample F of A by herself and send it over to the receiver using an error correcting code. Formally, uh, correctness and privacy against the sender with epsilon error requires that the joint distribution of the sender's encoding and receiver's output is epsilon close to the joint distribution of the sender's encoding and the output of the functionality. 
Privacy against the receiver requires that the channel's output can be simulated using only receiver's output, that is f of a. Intuitively in this model, the secure computation is necessarily carried out by the channel. The encoding and decoding are done to facilitate such a secure computation by the channel. This makes the model interesting from a theoretical point of view as it investigates the secure computing capabilities of a noisy channel. In this, the setting is non-interactive and does not use any setup. Furthermore, many cryptographic tasks can be captured as secure computation of sender receiver functionalities. This makes the model appealing from a practical point of view. We list a few applications. The previous work on this topic has noted that ZK proofs using OWSC is the first truly non-interactive CK proof. It need not, it does not need a common randomness setup uh, and it guarantees desirable properties like non-transferability and deniability. Another application is the generation of random puzzles where no party gets any advantage in solving them. OWC also helps in constructing randomized blind signatures, which have applications in eCache and non-interactive certified PKI generation. Before we venture forth, let me describe some of the channels and functionalities we would encounter going further. A binary erasure channel with erasure probability P takes a single bit input, and with probability P it erases the bit, and sends it forth without error otherwise. A binary symmetric channel with cross crossover probability P also takes a single bit input and flips uh, the bit with probability P. Both these channels are often used to model naturally occurring communication links. A random oblivious transfer functionality or ROT for short, which can be thought of as oh, can be thought of as a channel two, is a randomized version of the oblivious transfer functionality. A bit ROT channel takes a pair of bits from the sender and erases exactly one of the bits at random. A string ROT channel works the same way, but with input being a pair of strings rather than a bit. Our work builds on the results in the initial work on OWSC from 2015. They showed that neither binary erasure channel nor binary symmetric channel is complete in the OWSC setting. This means that they cannot compute all functionalities with negligible error, even against a computationally bounded adversary in the OWSC model. By negligible error, we mean that the error should be a negligible function of the number of channel uses made in the protocol. That is the length of the encoding sent by the sender. In this work, we extend this result to show that no channel with finite input and finite output alphabet is complete with negligible error, even against a computationally bounded adversary. On the positive side, the same work had showed that the family of string ROTs of all string lengths is complete for OWSC with uh, negligible error. We show in this work that the finite bit ROT channel is complete, but with inverse polynomial error, even against a computationally unbounded and possibly malicious adversary. Finally, they also constructed a zero knowledge functionality using BEC and BSC in the OWSC model. We generalize this to provide a complete characterization of channels that allow ZK functionality in the OWSC model. Our first theorem states that there is a computationally efficient OWSC protocol that makes n uses of the bit ROT channel and realizes a string ROT of length about n to the delta and the protocol is n to the half minus delta secure against a malicious adversary. This theorem establishes that string ROTs can be realized using bit ROT with inverse polysecurity. A result in the 
Gerg et al's paper from 2015 already showed that the class of string ROT is complete in the OWC model. Hence, bit ROT is complete in the inverse, complete in the OWC model with uh, inverse polynomial error. In the coming slides, we will provide an overview of the OWC protocol that realizes string ROT using bit ROT channel. Remember that a string ROT functionality takes a pair of strings as input and erases exactly one of the strings uniformly at random. Let us see what a OWC protocol of string ROT using bit ROT must be like. On input u sub zero comma u sub one, the sender uses an encoder S to encode the input into a sequence of pairs of bits. It then sends uh, each of the pair of bits in the sequence to the receiver using the bit ROT channel. For each pair in the sequence, the bit ROT channel erases exactly one of the bits uniformly at random. The receiver then applies the decoder R on the received sequence and outputs U sub 0 comma bot or U sub bot comma U sub 1. Privacy against the sender requires that the sender does not learn which of the two strings have been erased. Privacy against the receiver requires that the receiver know, knows nothing about the erased string in his output. We will next see the kind of challenges we encounter when we try to build an encoder and decoder that provides these guarantees. Observe that N uses of bit ROT channel is fully described by the set of positions at which the channel has erased the first bit. This erasure pattern on the N fold use of bit ROT channel is a uniformly random subset of the set one to N. Let us take a look at the hypercube of erasure pattern corresponding to n fold use of the bit ROT. <coughs> Here, uh, the diamond shape represents a hypercube of erasure patterns. If our OWC scheme is to be correct with a small error, then we would require that for most of the encodings sent forth by the sender, erasure patterns in about half of the volume of the hypercube results in the receiver decoding the first string. It should decode the second string in the other half of the hypercube. Furthermore, these decodings are correct with high probability. I have called the string a message in this slide. Of course, these decoding regions need not be the upper and lower half of the hypercube but surely these regions should occupy about half of the volume of the hypercube each. Consider an erasure pattern that is on the boundary between these two regions. It will have neighbors sitting on either regions. And this is a problem when trying to guarantee privacy against the receiver, because a curious receiver can mount the following attack. The receiver first decodes the channel's output to obtain one of the strings in the string ROT. Further, it guesses the channel's output for one of the neighboring erasure patterns. With constant probability, the receiver will succeed in this. And if luckily this neighboring erasure pattern decodes the second string in the ROT, it declares success, hence breaking privacy. By a concentration bound, since both regions are almost half the volume, the boundary of the region, which is where this attack succeeds, is of substantial volume. For an n-dimensional hypercube, indeed the probability of falling in this boundary is about 1 by square root of n. This is the intuition behind the impossibility of OWSE over bit ROT channel with negligible error. In fact, the in fact. Uh, this is possible, th this is impossible even with 1 by n to the n square error. Also observe that this attack can be mounted even by a computationally bounded observer or, or, or adversary. It turns out we could generalize this intuition to work for all finite channels. Now, uh, if we only need a weaker 
security guarantee being optimistic we could try to turn this unfortunate situation on its head we could hope to arrange for the following there is a region where the first string can be decoded and another region where the second string can be decoded while guaranteeing the privacy of the undecoded string both regions occupy about half the volume of the hypercube and in between them there is a gap or a region of transition where the process of erasing one of the strings and unerasing of the other string happens intuitively this gap should be about as wide as the length of the strings so that they can be erased and unerased as we pass through this region intuitively our uh, owc protocol shows that such a scenario is realizable we construct a scheme which guarantees that if the bit rot channel leaves more than n plus n to the delta by 2 positions unerased in the first index the receiver gets to decode the first string and learns nothing about the second string and if the bit rot channel leaves more than n plus n to the delta by 2 positions unerased in the second index the receiver gets to decode the second string and learns nothing about the first string but whenever uh, the number of erasures in both the indices are in the interval n plus or minus n to the delta by 2 the decoder may learn partial information about both the strings this is the transition region we mentioned in the previous slide but uh, by anti concentration the probability of erasure patterns falling in this gap is n to the delta minus half which is inverse polynomial in n we provide a construction that guarantees this behavior as long as the length of the strings are about the same as the gap that is n to the delta by now you must have guessed what type of primitive we would use in this construction we would use a uh, ram secret sharing scheme but with weaker privacy and reconstruction guarantees than required in the classical definition of secret sharing we need a n party secret sharing scheme with one bit share size for a secret of size about n to the delta we need a reconstruction threshold to be n to the n plus n to the delta by 2 and secrecy threshold to be n minus n to the delta by 2 requiring uh, constant size shares already makes even ram secret sharing with perfect reconstruction and secrecy impossible to achieve on top of this we are also asking for the gap between reconstruction and secrecy threshold to be inverse polynomial but on the brighter side we only need reconstruction privacy errors to be small rather than zero and that to only with high probability for a uniformly random subset of parties this is because the parties for us are analogous to positions left unerased by the rot channel our construction of the secret sharing scheme closely follows a recent work by lin charakji et al which showed that if we are willing to tolerate some error in secrecy and reconstruction secret sharing with one bit shares is possible as long as the secret size is comparable to the gap between reconstruction and secrecy threshold but this construction does not allow the gap between the reconstruction and secrecy threshold to be inverse polynomial our construction works around this issue with a simple tweak given such a average case ram secret sharing scheme the construction is fairly straightforward the sender secret shares u0 in the first index and u1 in the second index if the number of erased bits is less than n minus n to the delta by 2 in the first index of the received string the receiver reconstructs u0 hopefully getting it right note that in this case the receiver learns nothing about u1 as he has only less than n minus 
into the delta by two of its shares. The case where the number of erased bits is less than n minus n to the delta by two in the second index of the received string is analogous. The scheme guarantees nothing when the number of erasures fall in the interval n plus or minus n to the delta by two, but this happens with inverse polynomial probability. Hence, we have a string ROT with inverse polynomial error. This is the construction. Our next result is on OWC of zero knowledge proofs. Our result shows that in OWC model, zero knowledge functionality can be realized using any channel that is not completely clear or completely noisy. If the channel is fully noisy or clear, we cannot realize zero knowledge without interaction and no setup anyway. The construction is a generalization of the one in 2015 paper by Gargeta. The idea is to encode many copies of oblivious ZK PCP and send it to the verifier. We need sufficiently many bits in each of these proofs to be erased by the channel to ensure zero knowledge and a large enough portion to be revealed so that the verifier can detect if the proof is correct. The bulk of the construction deals with emulating a noisy erasure channel using the given channel so we can execute this plan. To construct a uh, noisy erasure channel using the given channel in the OWC model, uh, we use a geometric interpretation of the given channel. Uh, this interpretation helps us in designing statistical tests that help the receiver abort when the sender deviates from the protocol for realizing the erasure channel. Please look at the paper for more details on this construction. In conclusion, the OWC captures the idea of secure computation using noisy channels. We showed that there exist finite channels that are OWC complete with inverse polynomial error. And finally, we provided a characterization of channels that can allow zero knowledge functionality in the OWC model. Uh, an interesting open question is whether we can characterize the channels that are complete for OWC, like the bit ROT. Uh, that is the end of this presentation. Thank you.